Hello, welcome to part 19 of our e-commerce website building lesson series and there's only going to be 20 parts. So you get part 19 and part 20 and then we're done. Because I'm going to show you right now how to pass the variables from your cart, your full cart, with quantities and all, to PayPal. And PayPal is going to have that full list, let the person check out and send the person back to your site. So that's what we'll do in part 19 and then part 20 I'll show you how We'll assemble the IPN script. We'll use PayPal instant payment notification to gather all those variables from the purchase into our MySQL database so we can know who bought what. Now I'll let you peek at the dynamics that's going to happen here. So what happens is this goes inside of the cart rendering part of the script right above the for each loop so in section 5 of your cart.php script. Then this goes in the for each loop itself as a dynamic looping mechanism and then this goes outside of your for each loop this final bit of code that way this code and this code on top don't get rendered out repeatedly just these three lines will get rendered out repeatedly and they're going to be set up dynamic so that's how you send a full cart upload and you have to make sure you use certain variables like this upload variable with the value of one now before I even get into showing you what all of this is all about, you should school yourself and I have some links for you here that I'm also going to put in the video description area and they're both to PayPal documentation. This one is all about adding PayPal checkout to your third party shopping cart. So here what you've built now is a third party shopping cart. You've custom programmed from scratch a third party shopping cart that can be connected to PayPal or any other gateway you choose. But we're going to choose to connect it to PayPal. So you can read the documentation about adding PayPal checkout to your third party shopping cart. And there's two ways to go about it. Method one is passing the aggregate cart amount to PayPal. We're not going to be doing that. We're going to be using method two, passing individual items to PayPal. Because I just think it's, it's a little more challenging and it's a little more, uh, it gives them a, a nicer list and it'll give you a more comprehensive list as well. So here it shows you, and you have to do all this reading yourself. I'm not going to sit here and read all these pages. There's method one. I'm skipping right by that. But you see they give you nice examples and explain everything to you. I'm going to go right here to method two, passing individual items to PayPal. Now here you can read about all of this, and you'll understand why my code looks the way it does right here. And quantity, they don't show you that, which is a big mistake, I think, on their part. They should have that variable in there as an example but the quantity and the price and the product name you can send in dynamically through a loop so all you have to do is check out the information on this page read that whole page and also this link here I will also supply this one under the first one now this one's very important because this is you could probably get to this link by just typing this into Google HTML variables for website payment standard PayPal you type that into Google you'll get to this page now this page is very long you see how long this page is but it shows you all of the variables what they mean what the uh, options you can choose to put is the values in those variables and you should read all of those if you want to become a good cart programmer alright so now you understand why I have these hidden input variables and they each have a certain name. I just showed you the page where all of these names are listed and you can research what each one does. I'm not going to sit here and waste my time or yours. You can do the footwork on your own if you're very interested and you want to get more powerful. So like I said, this is going to go in above our for each loop. This is going to go inside of our for each loop that renders out our cart. And this one's going to go right below it outside of it. Section 5, we can expand that code in cart.php. Since we have a for each loop that's already rendering the card out, we can use this for each loop and splice in the code we need to render out this PayPal cart button dynamically. Okay, right below these other two variables that we're initializing in the beginning of section 5, let's initialize one more. Let's just put that one in single quotes, two single quotes to encapsulate that one. And let's name it pp underscore checkout underscore btn short for PayPal checkout button now we can take that variable 
and we know we're going to append to it here, not inside of this if condition area, but inside of the else condition area. Because if there's no items in the cart, you definitely don't want to have a, uh, a PayPal button. All right, so right here, I put a little note that says start the for each loop. So right above that line of code, I'm going to pop in this variable, the PayPal checkout button. I'm going to go here and grab this code. Remember, this goes inside of the cart rendering part of the script, but it's not inside of the for each loop yet. We're right above it. Now here, it's very important that you put your business email there, your PayPal business email. And don't forget that. That's very important. Here, let's make a little note to ourselves and say start start PayPal checkout button. Now within the for each loop, we also have to, oh, let's make sure we put the dot before that equal sign. Really on that one, it's not as important, but we can still put it there because we're going to have it on all of them. So let's take that variable and inside of the for each loop, Let's see, where should we put this? Right above dynamic table row assembly. Let's put another comment that says dynamic checkout button assembly. That makes sense. Whatever you want that makes sense to you because this is where data is going to be looped over to create all of the items that are to be checked out for at PayPal. So we'll put that variable in, single quotes, two of them put two single quotes semicolon now here we know we need these three lines and that is the item name whatever the product name is the amount how much it is and the quantity how many of those let's go back in the cart right there pop it in and put the dynamic variables needed in the spaces needed here okay so we're gonna come back to that but right now let's put in the last little bit. Now this will be outside of the for each loop here. Let's just go right under the cart total. And let's type in a little comment. Finish the PayPal checkout button. And remember this is outside of your for each loop. You put that variable name in. Make sure it has a dot in front of the equal sign to append. Now within that one you're going to put the last little bit of the form here. I'm going to explain what all of these things are. Hey, Liam, I'll explain them to you real quick before I put the code over there. Actually, uh, all you have to do is read this page so I don't have to explain it. It's all right here. All those variables can be found on this page. So don't be lazy. Do your own research if you really want to know. That's where I found out. And that's where you can find out too. So I don't have to explain that. Because you know I know because I read all that crap. And I know you can get to learning it yourself if you just read all that crap. All right, so let's go to cart PHP and right here where we finish the PayPal checkout button. Booyah, baby. If you see it has a uh, single quote there, just remove the single quote and you won't have any problems. Or you can escape it with the backslash like this. You put the backslash. And that'll escape it. I'm just going to remove it. I'm going to press Control S so I don't lose my work here. And now I'm going to go to... Uh, this, back to this middle section here where we haven't put in the dynamic variables yet for the item, each item's name, each item's price, and each item's quantity, how many they want. And you're going to like this. This is pretty cool the way this all renders out at PayPal. Alrighty. Remember that our array has a index of zero, a starting index of zero? But we want each item, we want the items that are being sent to PayPal to start with a one. So let's make that happen real quick. You see this x variable that I have there? Pop it right in there. x is equal to i plus 1. That way x will always be the correct value. So it'll be 1 through the first pass of the loop. It'll be a 2 in the second pass, how it should be for sending to PayPal. And we're doing this because our array has a default index of 0. So the first pass through the loop is a 0. To fix that up, just make that x equal to i plus 1. So wherever you see this x here, we have to put a single quote, space, dot, space, go past the variable, space, dot, space, single quote. Wrap them up like we've been doing so they render correctly, or else they will not render correctly in that string. Single quote, space, dot, space, past the variable, space, dot, space, single quote. 
we got that one there. So we have the input item name one is going to be, let's also put a dynamic variable there. So this is going to be product name. Let's grab that, put it right there. Very simple. Here, let's move these in. Now the price goes here. So we'll have a dynamic variable here for the price and a dynamic variable here for the quantity. Price is this variable right there. Pop it into place. And the quantity, you have to grab this each item quantity variable here. Very simple. Put it right there where that X is. And now you have the quantity for each item as well. Now, what I'm going to do is render out this PP checkout button variable. Let's see, where should I render it? I can put it right under the card total. Just put a couple of line breaks there. Semicolon, PHP, echo. Now let's see what happens. Okay, I put my PayPal business email account within that business variable line. I'm going to click the PayPal Buy Now button. And you can make this any custom button you want. And you can put as much razzle dazzle as you want around it to let people know that that's the checkout button. And there it is. So you can see this is my actual business at PayPal. And look how the cart renders out at PayPal. It's pretty sweet, right? Quantity was 2 for that one item, so it made the price 20. So everything's correct. Even if they change their quantities, it carries through because of the way we're sending all these dynamic variables. So if somebody checked out right now using this, I would get paid this $40, and I would get all the information about the transaction and know who to ship this to and get the shipment out and have a happy day. So really, at this point, you're selling. But in part 20, I'm going to show you how to set up the IPN script. That way you can get data back. Since we're, we're using this, uh, I'll show you right here. It's in part 5 of the script, section 5. We're using this notify URL. And don't worry, after part 20, you guys will get the code. So if any of this was confusing, you'll see the actual working code that I have. And all I would have to do is configure this to be my site. Even though these variables don't say my site right now, you can see it's still working. The cart's there. It would make the payment and everything. But it just wouldn't know where to send back to. So you have to make these variables or these values valid. And they should all be HTTPS, secure SSL. If you're going to use IPN and things like that, you can get variables back from PayPal. You know, just to make your shoppers feel good, you should use SSL. Okay, so stay tuned for part 20 where we'll discuss the IPN and getting all of the information from this purchase back on your site, capturing it with a script behind the scenes. That way you can sync it into your MySQL database. But you're also going to get, PayPal's automatically going to send you information about this purchase. PayPal's also going to send the person who bought the things from your store, invoice and receipt and all that good stuff. So it's really, it's a complete process at this point but you can do more, and part 20 will explore that.